Hi everyone and welcome back. In this video we are going to talk about how to manage the large uh, NestJS application, how to manage their files and folder in the structured way, I mean in the best possible way. So in this video we are talking about what is the scalable folder structure you can have for the NestJS application, right? So in the NestJS you have a configurations, you have a logger, you have all these different kind of a domain modules where you are managing the controller, services, factories, providers some external connections, external libraries, uh, caching, database, storage, all those things are there. So how can you have a proper folder structure which is scalable for the NestJS application? So here this is how you can manage the app configurations like okay you have a configurations for the Redis, configuration for database, all those things can be managed centrally. Inside database you will have factories, migrations, shader, subscriptions. And then further you will have a jobs like if you are writing a consumer and producer service here models right here instead of models you can have a domains that okay here you have an address or the users so inside a users you can have entities either a separate folder or you can put a user controller user service user provider user DAO service user interface user DTOs all these things inside a user folder then address folder and all these things will be inside a domain module of the NestJS. I mean these are the domains for which we are writing the APIs, the providers, the cache providers, queue providers and all. So this is how you can split them like the, all the entities, interfaces, controllers, providers and services. You can have a source domain. These are actually the, the domain entities for you are writing APIs. Then we have set of uh, database. Inside database you can have migrations, seeders, and some particular factories about the classes and subscriptions how the authentication is structured in source you can have authentication and inside that you can have all the strategy local strategy jwt strategy uh, auth controller auth module auth service and then serialization and interfaces so you just need to split the folders properly because nestjs is providing you the, the best design model and what you need to do is you just need to put your interfaces, your DTOs, your controllers, your services, your entities, your module in a structured way. So whoever is looking at your code, you will be able to understand, okay, this is auth service. And this is how the JWT payload interface looks like. And this is the login DTO, which is being used by the auth controller. So finally, all the common thing like the constant, decorators, exception filters, guards, pipes, interceptors, all those things you can put inside a source either shared or either common or some kind of a core folder in this you can actually arrange all these things together like exception filters some common cards some serializers all the pipes filters all the nest just common building blocks which are shared you can put all those things together so now let's see all these things in action you can look for this material theme actually it gives you the custom icon for your each and every nest.js stuff you can see now my vs code is colorful let me just get rid of uh, this panel so we can have a full view so here we have source auth common config database domains events jobs lib and providers these are specific folders and inside domains we have address all the domains for which we are writing the rest apis and then here you can see uh, we have a database folder, config folder and commons. So commons all the shared and utilities and this is the auth folder where we where we can have auth strategy, interfaces, serializers, auth guard, auth module and auth service inside the common. So inside common we have constant, filter, guard, pipe, uh, middleware, interfaces, so everything like utility helpers. Uh, guards inside guard there can be auth guard auth guard or any kind of other guards interfaces all the auth related interfaces can be here middleware like auth middleware so here we have this common folder now in the config config can have a separate config for database for redis for kafka or all these things inside database we will have a database module database providers uh, seeders migrations and these are the domains inside domains we will have all the entity domains for which we are writing the APIs like okay account address profile let's say address so what we are doing here inside address we are creating controllers DTOs entities modules services DAO service 
there is no need to create a separate folder for entity for dto for interfaces i mean this is the address domain and i'm putting everything about address inside this the controller providers uh, dao service service module interface all these things are combined and encapsulated here only rest if we have providers like cache provider database provider queue provider you can have a providers and the external library lib folder where we, you you have all the external integration okay i do have a aws dynamo aws s3 aws ssm all these integrations will be in the lib folder and then just a test folder inside test folder you can have uh, your fixtures and to end tests a mock or all these things so here you can create your because unit tests are part of the code base only dot spec dot ts but end to end tests you can create separately in the test folder inside a e to e folder so this is all about like how you can have a production ready scalable folder structure and this is really scalable scalable because you can baseline uh, this kind of a project and then same project can be used by across the, all the teams using the same conventions same folder structure because nest js is opinionated that means you have to follow a certain guidelines for creating the modules services controllers and you can follow one baseline structure which can be adopted by everyone so it the readability of the code and understandability increases for the developers